Hello and good evening. Uh, this is Easy8 and my name is Danny. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than my usual thing. Uh, normally on a Friday evening uh, from 7 till 9, uh, I do online painting club. Um, and last week's show, um, I said that I would like to do a bit of a product review. I normally like to do things like that for um, exclusive content, etc. on Facebook, but I've recently had um, some new subscribers to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Um, so I thought as a little bit of a treat, I would also provide this, um, stream this basically to both platforms, so Facebook and YouTube. I've got some people watching live already. Kesslyn Hooper. Yay, it's showtime. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for coming along. I could have done this product review um, as a recorded element like you will always see. But I think, to be quite honest, I think that my shtick is, is live performances wherever possible. Um, and what I think that we can benefit from for a demonstration or for a product review live is that you get to see what it happens. There's no editing or anything like that. And I promise I won't do anything to the video afterwards. So if it goes wrong, it goes wrong and you get to see what happens and you get to make your mind up as to whether the products that I'm going to look at are good for you. Um, this is not something that I'd really planned. I hadn't thought about taking easy into the realms of product review simply because that, that sort of stuff exists. In, its, in, in, a, in a wealth out there already. Um, but I have been asked to do some uh, bits and pieces. So if that's what people would like to see, then I'm more than happy to oblige. So um, the product that I'm gonna be looking at today is uh, very simply a uh, paint remover by Green Stuff World. Green Stuff World are, are an epic company um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I first saw them a couple of years ago when I was looking at sculpting supplies. Um, and ever since then, they've just expanded and expanded um, really successfully into the, the world of um, sort of hobby supplies. They do their own line of paint brushes, a very successful range of paints. Uh, recently, and I, I was looking for um, a few other bits and pieces, and I was looking for a solution to paint stripping or paint removing from models. I've got a, a whole pile of old metal models that I didn't paint very well a long, long time ago, um, and I wanted to remove the work and, and, and go you know, and do something new with them. Um, so if you've been watching some of my um, live uh, online painting clubs, you would know that I've been doing that recently anyway. So I'm going to take you over to the workbench um, and you can see what I've got here. So this is this is the bottle that it comes in. This was um, 9.99, I think it is in the in the, in the UK. I bought this um, not from Green Stuff World Direct, but I bought it from Play Games UK. Um, there are a company who I support. Um, I bought some stuff from them recently. I just thought that their um, service was just unparalleled second to none i made a couple of orders from them i got handwritten thank you notes in each box they remembered who i was between each order um so i said that i would shout them out and this is one of the items that i bought from them um so it comes in a 240 milliliter bottle which is just over eight fluid ounces uh, and there's quite uh, quite an amount in there now i did find that i went through it quite quickly but this isn't single use. You can use this and use this and use this over and over again, like many other paint strippers or paint removers out there. In the past, I've used in the UK, we have a substance called nitromores. I don't know if that's a, um, something that you can get anywhere else in the world, but it's pretty noxious stuff. It's, it's very unpleasant to, to deal with. It's very thick and gloopy. Um, and it, if you get it on your skin, it can be an irritant and it smells awful. Um, I've been told that BioStrip 2.0 is very good for plastic um, models because nitromores will melt the plastics. Um, I don't know if any of those two items are good for resin models at all. Um, I've been using Dettol recently uh, on some of my miniatures uh, on my little metal biovore that I was painting as part of the live um, painting show. But it made such a mess that it just was not worth me doing it again, which is why I kind of went to look for this this paint remover here. So I, I saw a couple of reviews of it myself on YouTube, and I was pretty blown away by the claims that were being made. On the back of this bottle here, it simply says, paint remover is capable of removing acrylic, enamel, and lacquer-based paints. Completely safe for miniatures in plastic, resin, or metal. Can be reused several times and has a low evaporation. Partially submerged miniature for one to six hours, depending on the paint type, rinse with water and remove excess with a synthetic brush if sufficient repeat process. Um, 
so oh, sorry if insufficient to repeat the process so what i did earlier on today i thought that i would try to um test the one hour and six hour um sort of time zones if you like on both metal and plastic unfortunately i didn't have any resin items to practice it on so what i did was i got this jam jar strawberry jam if anybody's wondering but i do prefer raspberry and i basically poured a, a very healthy amount of this stuff i don't want to tip it too far on its side in case it does leak but i just poured a very healthy amount of this into the bottom of this jar there's still a little bit left in there so probably about this much but the label does obscure how much is left in there um but I'm not too worried about it. It's not like I'm going to just throw this away or dispose of it because you can just reuse this. So what I've done is I've got two models in there. I've got I basically I had an old metal um, Red Terror model from Games Workshop, and I had a couple of old style plastic um, Gene Steeler models also from Games Workshop. And I put two pieces in, one metal, one plastic, at six hours ago, and I put another two pieces in there. Um, an hour ago so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through them and clean them and see how well each of those two different times hold up now the chemical isn't all that nasty um, I don't does it have anything safety on the back of it it does say warning harmful in the case of ingestion skin contact or inhalation causes skin irritation causes serious eye irritation so while it's it, it has a slight aroma that normal paint removers have um, but it's really not that bad I'm in a well ventilated room here if I was if it was anything stronger than this I would contemplate wearing a ventilator um, or even doing it outside but it's actually very very mild but I'm still going to be very careful about not splashing it so you want to consider the surface that you're working on or even you know potentially wear um, gloves if you've got sensitive skin so on and so forth eye protection that sort of thing so I've just got a couple of pieces of cotton thread and I did a little clove hitch because I can tie those around my models and I just dipped them in there with little tags on there so the first one that I'm going to pull out is um, a piece of my red terror um, which was a piece of masking tape just stuck to the side here and it simply says on here all my lights are bleeding that out but it says six hours metal so this went in six hours ago it's just a little over six hours actually um, I didn't want to put the whole model in there because it was quite big and I just wanted to have a little piece in there that I could just kind of scrub away so beside me I've got a bowl of water this is a metal bowl I don't know if it will affect plastic I've probably not if it's going to be on plastic models and I just thought I would then just drop it straight into the water there now I've seen other uh, other videos on YouTube of people using this product and they're pouring it directly on and scrubbing and scrubbing um, let me move my lights away a bit so it doesn't bleed out so much there we go so I'm now basically just going to scrub this paint away now the paint that I used on this model was a very long time ago instantly um, shreds of paint coming away you can't see that on the camera fortunately because I've got a white bowl here um, but I use a mixture of different types of paints on here these paints when used in the Dettol as a paint remover just turned into a thick jelly that utterly destroyed everything it touched now this is coming away absolutely beautifully I'm gonna see if I can hold it away from that white bowl um, so that's gone right down with very very minimal scrubbing I've barely touched that um, at all with that with that old toothbrush there and it is a synthetic toothbrush and it's come away straight down to bare metal and I, yeah that I'm really happy with that straight away now you might think to yourself you don't get an awful lot of this product for 10 quid um, but actually it's it's more than enough because I can just reuse this if you've got big paint particles floating around in there for a long period you know, if, if, you know kind of getting in the way and clogging it all up then you could just pour it out into another receptacle with some sort of homemade filter like a piece of muslin cloth I suppose um, or uh, even a coffee filter um, and that should filter out all of the uh, the particles that are kind of floating around in your paint remover so that you can then funnel it back into its jar clean up the jar if you needed to and um, have virtually clean product again and that will just make sure that your liquid just has a longer life as it possibly can now there are different parts of this model here if you, I don't know if you can see here um, I've got like a is this basically the, the mouth or the throat of this red terror model and I painted it blue to kind of um, stand out away from the, the red colors years and years ago and um, 
it worked really well but i covered it in gloss paint and i, I used different types of paints so not all of it was acrylic i think there was like um some sort of an enamel gloss or something i used that years ago it was before i really knew what i was doing and i can see that the, it is struggling a little bit on that blue area where i've clearly used a different product in there or i've used a a type of enamel gloss but it is coming away and it's kind of sitting at the bottom of the bowl in there which you can't see on that camera very well it is taking a little bit of effort to scrub in and around the ribs here so it is sitting in there a bit more um, but of course what I've done is I've gone and dipped this straight into water when I could have just been scrubbing over you know some dry paper towel or something like that in fact because it's been sat in there for quite some time in, in that water now it seems to have possibly neutralized the effect the black is falling away very very easily here i've got a bit of cotton thread there it's still in, kind of in the way but generally i'm really happy with that i could do this over a big bowl and do lots of models together but yeah that paint is falling away i might need to get like a little um like sharp pokey object in the ribs or in some of the details or even just submerge it again and leave it overnight i only did the six hours and one hours because that's what was suggested on the um on the video when i was doing detol paint removal i was leaving it in there for a couple of days and it removed the paint from the model beautifully but it just utterly destroyed everything that i touched with it i i had an old toothbrush that i was keeping aside for cleaning it and instantly as soon as i touched it, the what was left of the paint in the detail just completely destroyed that toothbrush so now on the red uh, paint uh, bit here it's, it's really struggling now to kind of remove but i could probably just soak him in it again overnight and what i'll do is I'll, I'll i'll do like another video just on the facebook page so if you wanted to see more go to easy 8 facebook um and i'll do like a little video update on on how well this kind of cleans up further but generally as a first go and the pleasantness of ha handling this this chemical and the smell of it whatever i'm actually really impressed cool well what i'm gonna do on the side here i've got an i've got a jar because i ran out of bowls just here just filled with warm water so i'm just going to kind of dunk him in there just so if there's any more rubbish on it then i can just let it soak for a bit because what i want to do now is i want to move on to six hours plastic so this is my little gene stealer in here so you'll get entangled up with all the other gene stealers as they always do so this one is looking like if you've ever seen robocop the guy who falls into the vat of acid um yeah his skin's all falling away these were an old set of second edition i think probably even um space hulk models uh, way before i really ever got involved in the hobby um and they were painted uh, they were found in a charity shop they were painted blue um and then i painted um, over with a very heavy green color and then recently I've sprayed them all yellow again so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to see how many layers it could go through um, and if it affects the plastic at all so I'm not going to dunk them in the water this time and I can actually smell the strength of that chemical because I've not dunked it in there so it does make a difference so do consider where you're doing this if you're in a ventilated room maybe don't wear your best Sunday attire <laughs> consider eye protection etc i'm being very gentle now to not get it around everywhere and it is literally falling away i am really really impressed with this product it's gone straight down to the original plastic color you can see that the blue of the original paint scheme from whomever owned these models before i did is coming away and this blue paint scheme i'm going to say is easily 20 years old if not more so i'm really really impressed with that that's just coming away it is behaving very similar to the detail that i used but rather than it um just becoming uh, an utterly destructive gunk i'm actually able to just kind of sloth it away and it just um can go into the water where it seems to neutralize it. and it's quite heavy so it just falls to the bottom of that water i'm a cotton thread i didn't plan that very well did i <laughs> I'm getting a little bit on my fingers. Uh, my skin is not being irritated by it from this amount of contact. But if I was going to do any decent amount of this, then as I can smell it here now, I would probably wear gloves. This 
is coming I'm really impressed with this so what I'll do again is I'll take photos I've taken a photo of these two models earlier on before I broke my red terror apart before I put them all into this chemical and then I will do some sort of progress updates throughout the week and I, I will show you what they look like after I spent a bit of extra time cleaning them up and I'll tell you if I had to spend any extra time or any extra chemical doing it I didn't really necessarily want to do these gene stealers I just have 42 I think of them so I thought you know what I'll just give it a bit of a practice and it's kind of just falling away in clumps I don't know if you can see that on the end of the brush now if that was the Dettol that would just stick there and I would struggle getting it off and I would be as soon as I started scrubbing again it would just smear it around and it was just awful but as soon as I dip it in the water it just falls away that is really good now I can see I don't know if my camera will pick it up so well can you see light blue and dark blue the dark blue is the original plastic of the model and the light blue is that original scheme there's a bit of white on this claw where they were originally painted if I just touch that now it literally just comes away like a little cat's claw <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. The um, the old basing um, substance is also falling away. There was some sort of flock on there. I'd also put my own flock over them back when I didn't really know what I was doing, and I'd painted all over it. They'd been varnished several times, and it's literally just pouring away. So I I reckon that with the metal one that I I had just a moment ago, uh, that that was probably. A little bit harder to remove because I dunked it straight in the water as where this is just I'm agitating the chemical that is on there so I'm gonna drop him into the water now just to kind of clear him up I've got a little bit of paper towel here so I can just dry my hands a little bit Wonderful. And I made a bit of a mess over my mat and now I'm gonna go over to the one hour so I've got the same models I've got basically another piece of that red terror and he's been in there for just about an hour now just over fractionally I want to make sure it was over and not under um, and I've also got another gene stealer in exactly the same setup so from the same bunch so let's go to the metal one first one hour metal peel that piece of tape away and this is the snaky serpent part of the red terror this bum end basically and this time again I'm not gonna drop him into that water Ooh, I'm sticking to everything with my tape bit slimy yeah I would definitely wear gloves so a bit of water in my brush I'm just gonna gently scrub that away it's a bit tougher to remove than it is from the plastic um, and I can see that it isn't coming away as easy if it's been in there for, if it had been in there for the six hours but it is leaving undercoat primer underneath there so the paint colors are coming away but it's not getting deep enough yeah leaving a bit of a mess on the top up there it's not clogging up the brush at all so I'm not ruining any of the cleaning tools that I'm using to scrub I'm just gonna try and concentrate on this one little bit here it's, it's, though it is coming away it is definitely noticeably tougher than the six hours which is kind of what I expected really and the best thing about this is is not damaging the uh, the bowl that I put this in so I'm not going to destroy it in my kitchen way or anything like that yeah so there's a little bit of bare metal showing through there it's having a tough time trying to get through the layers there's basically an undercoat on there that that undercoat was used by you know, by by brush applied by brush uh, and then there was just several layers of the red they weren't really watered down because it was from a time before I really knew what I was doing with paint um, so it was on there quite thick and haphazard um, and that's probably gonna require a little bit more time in that bath but if you're gonna have a couple of days where you have got to go to work or whatever and you're just gonna leave this somewhere on the side in your, in your um, painting area then you could just leave it there for a day 24 hours leave it overnight that's more than enough I think so what I might do is I, I might stick the rest of this red terror in overnight for 24 hours and I'll do another little Facebook update because this stuff is actually really really good okay cool I'm just gonna dunk this one in the water over here and I've got my wet paper towel just to clean it off my hands there we go okay so the last little piece now is one hour plastic so another gene stealer 
and uh, let's see what this one's like. Again, looking like a Robocop acid bath victim. Just gonna hold him over the water there. I'm trying to not touch my skin too much because I'm not wearing gloves. Uh, this one is looking uh, actually much gloopier. It's, look, it's actually done more to it. So, okay, uh, just to make sure that my brush is clean. And now I'm just gonna run it across the top there and the paint instantly falls away. So something about the metal. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm not a chemist or a scientist of any kind. Uh, and I don't pretend to know things, but it seems that the plastic models um, don't hold on to the paint as well as metal ones. It's literally falling away as if it's been in the, that um, substance for six hours. So you could stick a load of plastic models and metal models into a big bath of this stuff. And if you just left it overnight, they would probably all be very, very easy to clean. That is falling away just as easily as the uh, as the six hours. I'm actually really, really impressed. And for ten pounds for a substance that I, I know that I can reuse. Interestingly, in the actual um, substance left over, there's not much in the way of particle. Um, is it particulate? Is that the right word? That's floating around in there. It has changed the colour a little bit. And we'll have a look at that in just a second. It has changed it a little bit. Um, so when it kind of goes in, it starts very, very mildly opaque, kind of greeny colour. And it has turned to a bit of a old tea coffee colour, very, very mildly. Um, but there's not really much in the way of like bits floating around in it. But if you did have bits floating around in it, because that's what happened, then you could, I say, just filter that out if you wanted to kind of save the product and make sure that you're getting all the bits out of it. It's a little bit more clingy. I'm having a not much of a tough time removing this, but it is sticking a little bit more, but it's not difficult at all. Again, you could just do this over like a big tub to prevent it splashing around all over your furniture or all over your carpet or wherever you're doing it and then you could just go you could go to town on it I suppose oh toothbrush is stuck under the gene stealer's arm yeah again the basing flock has just literally just fallen away scrubbing and scrubbing yeah and look at the color of that water as well you can definitely tell that it's come away so in under the chest there in the gene stealer model where it's like a, a big sort of valley or recess in that model is obviously where that paint is really gripping into and i'm kind of trying to snag it to kind of pull it out but i know from the last one that if it'd been in there for longer it just weakens the 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 strength that the paint has in its grip and it just falls away so yeah, I recommend leaving it a little bit longer, perhaps maybe in there for the six hours. And then perhaps don't don't dunk it straight away into water like you're trying to neutralize acid or anything like that. It doesn't have any acid label warnings on it, so it's, but it is obviously an irritant, so you do want to be careful. I'm only doing these couple of miniatures, but if I was doing anything longer than this, I would I would definitely wear gloves just to save your skin. Okay, I think that's about as much as I'm going to get away from that for now. It wants to cling in on, on the underside a little bit more, perhaps because it's had five hours less time. Wonderful. But otherwise, that has very, very little effort to get him down to his original thing uh adrian oh we've got some other viewers thanks for coming along guys uh, adrian has said I, I found that even biostrip struggles with metal miniatures so it must be something uh, to do with um the way that it maybe it's got a, like a more pitted surface and it just has microscopically more area to hold on to um but it, it wasn't it wasn't difficult with ha having left it in there for the six hours it wasn't difficult to remove um i say i um, just dunked him straight into the water because I, I don't know maybe I was just scared um, but yeah if you left him in there overnight and then just give him a scrub straight away 
I reckon it would fall away very, very easily. But there is a noticeable difference between the metal and the plastic. Um, but I'm really happy with that. I was starting to think, oh, you don't get as much as you would normally in like a bio strip box. I know they, they come in quite large bottles and nitromores you get quite a bit. And the Detail was, was, was loads. I was like, oh, I wonder if this is going to be a good product. But it, it really is a really good product. And you can see it's gone right down to the original colours. Um, he has got a little bit of light blue on the top and dark blue underneath. And I'm wondering if that is original paint. I wonder if I can scrape that away with my fingernail. No, I can't. Oh, I can. So he has got a little bit more to go through, but it's so thin. <laughs> it just doesn't want to scrape away. Whatever paint that was, I don't know. That was before I ever owned this model. But all the detail is there. All of it, I can see it nice and clearly. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with this product. Let me just dunk that in the water as well there. Flick my toothbrush around. Definitely should wear some protective gear for that. Clean up my surface there and I'll put the lid back on so you can see the quality of the substance back in the jar. Right, there we go. So, slightly cloudy like like we i suppose like swamp water dishwater uh and there is a tiny bit of part you know particulate i'm gonna say that word i don't know if it's a real word or not but there's a slight amount of it at the bottom very heavy so it's just sitting down there and i suppose if you wanted to just kind of filter that out then you could just use um a coffee filter or a piece of muslin cloth and have funnel and then just kind of pour it away wash out your original receptacle uh, and off you go so Let's come away from here. Let's uh, get over to my webcam. Here we go. So that is a review of Green Stuff World Paint Remover. Um, would I recommend this? Absolutely. I, I really would. Like I say in all of my videos, I'm I'm not a pro, and I haven't tried the the hundreds of hundreds of different products that are out there. I've tried a few, and I have experience with those few, um, and I wanted to try something different. Would I? use anything other than that right now uh, I probably wouldn't what's Adrian putting in now if your wee looks like that then you've got problems chap maybe I have I don't drink that that's for sure um, I, 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 I'm very happy with that product uh, and I'm going to continue using it for a while and see how it goes over a period of a year or whatever um, if there is another substance out there that claims to do the same or better and you want a comparison, then maybe hit me up in the comments, uh, drop a line over on Facebook or get in contact with me directly through Facebook. I I'm on Facebook all the time because um, I'm one of those people um, and I will more than happily enter into a dialogue and we'll, we'll talk about that and I can do that for you. I do have some other products that I want to um, kind of do some sort of reviews and live demonstrations on. Uh, but I, I've not got, got anything planned at the moment. It's very close to Christmas here. Uh, and th obviously there's um, all sorts of stuff happening in the world with the pandemic. So I don't know what my time frame or schedule is going to be for that. But I, I'm more than happy to continue doing more sort of demonstrations and product reviews. So uh, here ends my um, product review for Green Stuff World's paint remover. I heartily re recommend. I would give it probably uh, four point seven five out of five stars i didn't expect to do any kind of star rating before i did the show but it's really really good stuff it smells really cool it's quite nice it's it's very very mild um but i i would maybe if you've got sensitive skin perhaps wear gloves if you can do anything for a long period of time um but other than that thank you very much for coming along to watch this live demonstration i try to keep it under half an hour and i'm pretty much there so thank you very much for coming along uh, and i will see you guys every friday for easy eights online painting club from uh, 7 p.m till 9 p.m gmt uh, however this week is coming up to christmas so this week it will be thursday but this week only uh, until then uh, get your models out. Let's get them painted and I'll see you around. Stay safe. Be kind. Cheers for now. Bye bye.